All right, what's going on, everybody? Today we got a project. We're going to do a battery modification on the Jetson E-Bike Pro. Uh, I don't know how many models of these there are out there, but this one has a 350 watt motor and 36 volt, uh, 6 amp hour battery in it. Um, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on how other people have done this, and I decided to do it my own way uh, for a couple of couple reasons. I see a bunch of people just tying a whole other 36-volt uh, cell into parallel with the existing cell on their charging with the same charger, and that's fine. The uh, problem you run, in with, run into there is the charge time. Um, this current battery, the book says, I haven't ridden this or tested it, my, tested it out myself at all, but the uh, current recharge time for the main battery inside this bike is four hours according to the book. Uh, so me personally, if it was my bike, uh, I would want something faster, really, is what it comes down to. So um, I decided to work around that and how I would accomplish that. Uh, so we're going to extend the capacity. The original goal for this uh, project right here was to extend the capacity uh, by 100%, just make it double. Um, so we ran into a deal that would require two of these Milwaukee. M18 batteries, uh, 6.0s, uh, but we ran into a deal where we could get two 5 amp hour batteries in this rapid charger uh, that will charge both of these batteries in 60 minutes uh, for $200. So the original plan was going to cost $450 for two 6.0s and this rapid charger. So we saved 250 bucks and we're dropping from 100% increase down to 83% increase. Um, but they can, uh, the person I'm doing this for can always upgrade later. If they want to. Uh, that's another another good reason why I decided to go this route instead of just tying in another cheap Chinese 36 volt pattern for the internet. Um, let me see here. So the problem, uh, the problem with running batteries in parallel is they need to be the same voltage. Uh, they need to be very close to the same voltage. Uh, same chemistry, we don't have this problem because they're both lithium ion cells. The original battery inside here and these as well. These are 18650 cells. Uh, they have a max current draw of about 30 amps. So we're going to be well within our power threshold for this. Um, and the freshly charged lithium ion cell holds 3.6 volts. So as long as these are fully charged, uh, together they can be used in parallel um, but the faster recharge rate 60 minutes versus four hours uh, I can get on this thing and go a lot a lot sooner if I wanted to so I wanted that availability uh, baked in there as well um, the, so what we're going to accomplish with this modification like I said we're going to gain about 83 percent range by the numbers with this battery setup uh, increased recharge rate for these. Uh, 60 minutes is what Milwaukee uh, specifies for the rapid charger. And uh, another reason I went with the Milwaukee is the uh, easy expandability if uh, person this world wants to expand in the future um, to get even more range. Milwaukee offers the 6 amp hour, uh, the 8 amp hour, and the 12 amp hour variants of their um, M18 batteries. And I know this is 36 volt system, but all we got to do is put two of these together in series, and then we have a uh, 36 volt, 5 amp hour battery. Or um, if you've got 12 amp hour uh, options, then you would have 36 volt, 12 amp hours, and that would increase your range up to 300%. So I wanted to go this route for expandability for uh, options in the future instead of having to tear things down and, and completely rewire it. You can just buy a set of batteries and slap those on and go. And then he's got two sets that can be charged at any time. Just to keep them going. Uh, for, uh, case in point, something to note. What I'm doing here is not going to expand, uh, increase the acceleration or, or the top speed. That's something that needs to be done with the motor itself and the uh, motor controller. We could do something on that later down the road if I have any questions um, from you guys. Um, why I chose the Milwaukee, I've kind of touched on it already. 
faster recharge time. These batteries come with a three-year warranty it's used as long as we use them properly. Uh, and they safely output 30 amps on a regular basis. That's great. This uh, 350 watt motor divided by 36 volts would be used nine something in amps and then split the batteries in the parallel. It's almost going to be half. So we're not going to see more than uh, five amps being pulled off of these batteries here. Uh, so we got plenty of uh, power output for those and the easy expandability and adaptability. Uh, I, love, uh, I love Milwaukee batteries just for you get a bunch of them and you can slap them in the paint. Uh, so what we're going to use to accomplish this is um, we have the batteries. We've got these adapters that come with the, uh, the specific adapter. The switch is going to cut off and then we're going to cut out uh, one of these fuses. Uh, we're just going to run one inline fuse of 30 amps. But uh, we're going to get rid of this switch. This 10 gauge wire is rated for 30 amps. Uh, we're actually going to step that down into the circuit. We're going to go with 16 gauge wires ready to 15 minutes to get us all the power that we need. Um, but I like these, and I see a lot of these. You see a lot of these on Amazon. This one specifically is injection molded and not 3D printed. Uh, the problem I have with 3D printing with ABS plastic is the temperature threshold. You get a hot day, you got it sitting in your car. I don't want it deforming or, or uh, you know, just melting in some sort of way. So I got this injection molding stuff. It's supposed to it's supposed to be a little bit more robust when it comes to temperature, even though it's still ABS. Um, so we're going to use that to tie our batteries in together. These will be tied in series, and then eventually we'll bring it down to the main battery in the parallel before the motor control. Uh, to do the isolation, like I said, you have to have uh, when you run these batteries. It's a process called equalization. So if I got a dead battery and a good battery and trying to get it in parallel, there's going to be a lot of current pulling from the good battery to uh, recharge that dead battery and, and basically equalize until it's the same level. This could uh, draw a lot of current and damage your circuit. So if you're going to use this setup, uh, you either need to recharge them two together or uh, make sure they're fully charged if you're going to use both of them together. And like I said, I wanted the availability to run each battery pack separate. So the way I'm going to do that is going to isolate each battery pack with a uh, maintained push button. So a maintained push button is one that you push in and it holds the, uh, it latches, it self latches and holds that circuit until you push it again and it resets. Uh, these have illuminated rings. These are going to both be red. Um, and they, the illuminated rings run off of 12 volts. So to get the 12 volts, I had to get my buck converter, uh, which will take which takes anywhere from 9 to 36 volts and outputs 12 and a half volts. So we're going to tie this in parallel also to our load um, and get 12 volts to get the illuminated ring to light up. And that's how we're going to accomplish that. That's going to allow me to choose if I want to run the main battery pack only, I'll turn that on. If I want to run the auxiliary battery pack by itself, I'll turn the main battery pack off and turn the auxiliary battery pack on. And if I want to run them in tandem, if they're both fully charged, then I can engage both of them. And then all of a sudden I have now a 36 volt battery with 11 amp hours. And uh, it just gives him, it gives him a lot of, uh, a lot of room to decide how he wants to use this. A lot of availability for the money. Uh, this this stuff right here, and then some of the other um, material that I got cost him about three hundred and fifty dollars total, and that's what the bike costs. So, I mean, if you're going to do an upgrade, you want it to be done right, and you want it to last, you want it to be reliable, and you want it to look good. So that's what we're going to try to accomplish with this. Thank you.
Okay, so here's the auxiliary battery mount. It was uh, a little bit more challenging than I anticipated. I had all the things that I needed going into the project. I just didn't know how I was going to line it all out. I was hoping to get in the main battery case, motor controller case, to put in all the switches and do the wiring there, but I did not have enough room when I opened it up. So I had to get a project box when I was able to find one uh, perfectly sized for this job. Wired up the switches. Got my little buck converter here. Made a pigtail with a waterproof connector on the end. And we have we had to make a uh, aluminum mounting plate for the uh, battery brackets because the batteries would not slip over the edges uh, right here in the front and the back to, to insert when they were just level. So made an adapter riser and placed that in there and that worked out well. And now all I got to do is put the main harness going into the uh, battery case for the uh, bike itself and make three connections and it's done. Uh, all the connections are waterproofed, heat shrinked. Give it the best uh, availability there is. There's also a overcurrent fuse, protection fuse right here. So no damage to the bike if we have too much battery. Uh, power pulling to the batteries and outside of that the project's almost done all right well there she is in all her glory this is the final install got a grommet right there with the main harness coming in a little project box the two batteries Isolation buttons. This one runs the main battery. This one runs the auxiliary with the Milwaukee. Push them in to run them both at the same time. Or you can run either or. Well, about six hours for the work. Not bad. nice little Delphi weatherproof weather connection whatever that means watertight connection 